I'm not here to teach you what to think. I'm here to teach you how to think. We have a question. Have you ever had the instance where a girl who is like a really good friend of my, of yours has left stuff back at your place as territory markers? Like, for example, um, a girl that I went out with recently who's, I mean, she goes out with me and she's kind of my wing girl, if you want to call her that. Um, she knows I kind of talk to and pick up other girls, but lately she's been kind of leaving her, let's say, gloves or like a little mini purse at my place and saying that she'll pick it up later. Why is that? It's a territory marker. On some level, she knows what she's doing. I'm not saying she's doing it consciously to screw you up. It's just her way to say, well, you're still sort of mine. Although I was never really hers. It doesn't or, matter. If you, it doesn't even there. matter if you were dating or not. If she sees a value in you on some level, she'll leave a territory marker, even if she's never had sex with you. Okay. Interesting. Now, another thing about territory markers, there are ways that women can leave territory markers to keep tabs on you that even I wasn't aware of, despite all of my training and my experience. I call this one the ice cube story. In order to keep a track of me and to leave a territory marker, a woman took it upon herself to fill up my ice cube tray without me knowing. And when she showed up again a week later, she noticed that some ice cubes from the tray were missing. I had no concept that she was the one who filled it up. I thought I might have filled it up. I mean, it's not something I'm going to be specific about remembering. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I did use some ice cubes. I don't know. And when she comes in on Friday and she goes to the freezer and she realizes, there's ice cubes missing here. You must have had people over this week. Who were they? What's going on, Frank? Now, you got to understand, this woman knew that I was seeing other people. There was no secrets with me. I don't have time for secrets because I barely have the memory capacity to remember if I filled up the ice cube tray or not. And at that moment, the phone rang. This woman answered my phone in my house without even asking me. She picks up the phone and says, who is this? My guess is she thought it might have been one of the women calling me. It turned out to be one of my male friends who was saying, uh, is Frank there? So I say, give me the phone. So I take the phone. And he says, Frank, what's going on over there? Uh, I'm having a bit of a spat here. He says, well, man, do something about it. No woman should be picking up your phone. I'm like, I'm sorry. I know she gave you attitude. I will speak to her about it. What'd you call me for? Oh, forget it. Okay, great. Now I'm pissed. I call her into the room, and I am furious. First of all, she's trying to keep tabs on me with this friggin' ice cube tray. Now, she's gone ahead, picked up the phone, and treated one of my friends rudely. What I wanted to do is I wanted to scream at her. But I was experimenting with addressing emotional needs at the time. This time, I was going to experiment with cater to the little girl in her. So I took her into the bedroom, I sat her down, and I began to scold her as if she were a little girl. I waved my finger at her, and I was wagging it at her as if I'm a parent scolding a five-year-old child. Now, dear, I want you to listen to me. What you did was absolutely unacceptable. You do not pick up the phone when you're at someone else's house. And I just started to continue scolding her like this for a good two or three minutes. And I then told her, I want you to get up, Go to the other room, and I want you to think about what you've done. Go sit in the corner of the other room and think about what you've done. The woman got up, without a word, went to the other room, sat down in the corner, and literally sat there with this pensive look on her face, thinking about what just happened. On the outside, I'm calm, very cool, collected. On the inside, I'm thinking, oh my god, it worked! Here's the thing. When you set up your apartment to speak on your behalf, to truly reflect your inner life, you're going to have so many women coming over. You're going to have your apartment luring them back. That you're going to have the opportunity to experiment with different behaviors. And you're going to have to learn how to deal with women who, even if they know and they understand that they're not the only ones you're seeing, 
Every now and then they're going to act in a very improper manner and you have to manage it. It's one of the burdens of the lifestyle. There's no way around it. You're going to date multiple women at the same time. You're going to have to deal with issues like this. You want to live and display your sexuality and through all of your artwork, you're going to have to deal with this. It's part of the burden of the lifestyle. Okay, in this first photo, this is a picture of my living room. 